I'm David Sams, and this is CIA, Contagious Influencers of America, from the producers of Keep the Faith. We have a very special edition of CIA today. This is uh, something I just had to do because last night I saw a movie. Uh, you know, I, I get one of these advanced uh, uh, movie screeners uh, from the studios and uh, the folks at Angel Studios. Now, these are the same folks who, of course, brought us The Chosen and brought us His Only Son. Uh, they sent it over to me and said, you really have to see this. We need some support because we're going to put this in theaters on July the 4th, Independence Day. Okay, I'll, I'll take a look at it. I took a look at it and I decided, you know what? Uh, this is a game changer. You know, we thought uh, The Chosen was a game changer. We thought His Only Son was a game changer. But these guys just keep coming up with, with uh, game changers. It's called Sound of Freedom. Sound of Freedom. And this one is, uh, this one features stars, Jim Caviezel. Of course, Jim played Jesus in The Passion of the Christ, acclaimed actor, been in all kinds of great films. And, uh, and he plays a real-life hero. I'm not talking about uh, a movie kind of, uh, you know, Marvel kind of hero. I'm talking about a real-life hero who's going out there every day, putting his life on the line, bringing his team with him now, and guess what they're doing? They're rescuing kids who have been trafficked all across the globe. And I'm not talking about just third world countries. I'm talking about right here in the United States of America. Tim Ballard is his name. He's gonna be joining us along with Jim in just a few moments. Now, Tim is a former government agent. He had a, now, now I, I'm not going to say a cushy job, because when you see this film, the job he had before was anything but cushy. But he took it to the next level. The government said, no, nope, you can only go so far. And he decided that he had God's calling on his heart, and he had to go out there and do more than what the government was calling for. And that's exactly what he did. So this real-life story is depicted in this new film, The Sound of Freedom. Once again, comes from Angel Studios. And Angel is asking us to please help them. And I'm asking you to help me. We need to sell 2 million tickets before the opening on July the 4th. This is to commemorate those kids out there right now. This is to honor those kids out there right now who are suffering. Two million kids because they've been trafficked. Folks, slavery, modern day slavery is bigger today than it was when slavery was legal. There are almost 28 million people across the globe right now who are in forced labor. This is a huge issue. And many of these folks are kids. And I'm talking about some of these kids are 6, 7, 10, 12 years old. Now, this movie is rated PG-13, so it's not for everybody. But I'm, I'm telling you, it's very well done. It's very tasteful. There are no graphic sex scenes and things that Hollywood would throw into something like this. By the way, Hollywood didn't even want to touch this thing. It was just too much for them. And you really got to wonder why they didn't want to touch it. Probably because it hits too close to home. We've all heard the stories. But uh, this movie comes out July the 4th. It's going to be in theaters all across the nation. And I encourage you to go see it. But we're going to show you a clip right now. It has an amazing cast. You're going to recognize a lot of the faces. And uh, we're going to show a clip. And then I'm going to bring on Jim Caviezel and Tim Bauer. How many pedophiles you got? 288. How many kids you found? the fastest growing international crime network that the world has ever seen. It has already passed the illegal arms trade, and soon it's going to pass the drug trade. Because you can sell a bag of cocaine one time with a child, five to ten times a day. God's children are not for sale. How long have you been doing this? Twelve years now. How many pedophiles you got? 288. How many kids you found? 
de un tío, o rescatar niños, ¿verdad? ¿Puedes ayudarme a encontrar a mi hermana? Te lo prometo. For Homeland Security, you know we can't go off rescuing Honduran kids in Colombia. Which means she'll disappear for good. Imagine walking into a room right now, seeing an empty bed. What we do? You quit your job, and you go and rescue those kids. So at this moment, she could be a block down the road, or she could be in Moscow, Bangkok, L.A. She's a major operator. It's all rebel territory. No one goes in. Not the army, not the police, not us. What if this was your daughter? There's no Marine unit coming. You're on your own. This job tears you to pieces. And this is my one chance to put those pieces back together. When God tells you what to do, Gentlemen, welcome. Um, I have to tell you, I, I, I saw the film last night, and um, I uh, I was very moved by it. And um, I also have to say, um, somewhat uh, ashamed um, that we in the Christian community have not taken. Uh, a closer look at this and uh, sort of uh, shoved it aside. We've got a, a new pandemic here that is spreading like a wildfire that um, we sort of are sweeping under the rug. And I know, Tim, you've been trying to get this word out. And Jim, I know you stepped up to do this film for that reason. So I'm just going to open the mic here and tell you that uh, I'm so appreciative that uh, that you all are doing this film. I'm so appreciative of uh, Neil Harmon and his brothers and Angel for stepping up where Hollywood wouldn't. I understand this film was made a few years back and that uh, nobody really wanted to handle it. So, uh, Jim, I'm just going to have you, since we're so familiar with you and, and uh, we love you and the work you do, I just would love for you to start with you and, and for you to tell us why you thought this film was so important for you to be involved with. Let me go back to how it all began. When I was a young man, I reached a really low point in my life, and I cried out to God. And I asked for him for a purpose in this life. And I was in a movie theater, the movie had ended, and symbolically, I didn't know that that was going to be my future. But the presence came over me, and it was like I was only God's only child. And I didn't know I was loved that deeply ever. Uh, by anything. And then it went to peace, the greatest peace I've ever felt. Um, I can imagine this would be something that I would feel in heaven someday. And then after that, he spoke to me and he said, I'd, I'd like you to be an actor. And there was an indelible mark written on my heart. Every morning I'd wake up, I'd like you to be an actor. And so I came to Hollywood and essentially Jesus carried me like a child. In his, and, and held me like a lamb. And at some point, about 10 years in, I finally got the role of my life. And I be, had a chance to either go the way of the world or hold Jesus in my heart like a lamb or slaughter him. I chose to um, do movies that would represent him, that would um, uh, edify the world in such a way that uh, looking for redemptive um, um, projects that had redeeming quality to them. And Tim Ballard, this film was very, it was really all set up like that. Um, Eduardo Verostegui and Alejandro Monteverdi, the producer and the director came to me and I read this script and it was amazing. They were even going to go in a different direction, but I made such a plea to them, please let me do this. I can let God speak through me. Now, God doesn't give me the easy roles. He gives me the hard ones, but the ones that are going to last forever. And Sound of Freedom is one of those films. Now, I let you t have Tim 
tell you his part and how he found me. But this guy was easy to play because he has a sem- chemical childlike heart like I have that I, I, I believe like David, that you don't talk about my God like this. Tim, Tim, um, first of all, I, I have to ask you one basic question because I'm sitting here last night going, I hope that the U.S. government gave you your pension <laughs> I, because I, you've done so much. And, and I understand in the film, uh, you, you were kind of cut off. Uh, you, you, you left the uh, force uh, because you were on a mission that you felt that you had to complete. Uh, how has the government uh, treated you since, since, uh, since you uh, left the agency? Well, actually, they, they, they like what we've done. You know, um, the foundation that grew out of that, uh, the story you watched in Center of Freedom um, has 140 employees. We have dozens of contractors are in five regions throughout the world. And we work very closely in most of our countries with our Homeland Security um, office, the very office that I came out of. I, I tend to get, I tend to recruit the best of, uh, out of that agency. So um, it's a good partnership. You know, we're just doing different things. It's, it's, we're doing the, the, the some things they can't do and they do things we can't do. And together it's, it's the private public partnership. So um, they, they were supportive and they, and they, they are supportive still. Um, even, you know, as the film depicts, even in the middle of that operation, I called them and they and they did give me support. They couldn't make it a U.S. case. They couldn't lead out on it, but they did support and they have they have since then. Well, good. Good for you and good for for our for our government. Let, let me ask you, why? Why is this? Why has this uh, spread like wildfire? Why? Why hasn't there been more? You know, we, we like to. Uh, uh, we, we don't we, we don't like to call it what it is in our world because I guess we're scared of it. Uh, we don't want to acknowledge it. We think that it happens in third world countries. Uh, but at the same time, there are, there are literally thousands and thousands of children going missing in the United States every year. Uh, why do why why is this swept under the carpet? Well, I think there's a lot of reasons. I think one is people don't want to look at it. It's too hard to look at. Um, also, these are complex cases. Uh, it's it's easier to just do old fashioned, you know, drug cases, and in, in terms of you know criminal investigations, uh, there's, about, there's probably last I last I saw there's about five drug agents to every one child trafficking agent in the U.S. That's horrible um, because it's it's hard again it's hard to look at complex cases, and it's something. I mean, there's six million children. Um, in one form or the or another of, of slavery, two million in specific to the commercial sex trade. Well, that means there's a crazy demand, and that demand is everywhere. It's not. It's it's anyone. It, it's in people with the high places that don't want things like Center Freedom to come out. They don't want there to be uh, actions to hurt their lifestyle. So that's all those reasons combined make it the problem that it is. But we think we can turn it around. We think this film can be a major tool to turning it around by waking up people of light and they get loud enough, you know, we can, we can see some shifts and some changes in, in governments around the world and how we attack this problem. You know, when we uh, did the passion of the Christ, we did it together. Yes. Mel and I went out and made that film, but we couldn't have done it without the public support and the Christians that moved and, and got together and, and said, why can't we buy out churches? They knew the a hell storm that we were getting from the media um, worldwide. And um, and it's almost like, you know, they're rewriting our Bibles for us, you know. So um, groups got together, mothers, uh, fathers, you know, they started buying out churches. And when you see this film, if you have to understand, I don't make faith-based movies. I make f- films that are going to beat the best films in the world. I don't like going to groups and saying, hey, we made a faith-based film for you, so you got to show up and support us. I don't say, I say, if our film isn't good enough, then don't come. And I, I want, I know that we hold the truth. The truth shall set you free. So we, I'm looking for something, stuff like that I, um, I, when I um, a Jimmy Stewart, it's a wonderful life. Things like that that turn your heart inside out. You know, this film has a power like the passion in this way. 
your heart is so on fire, you want to do anything for God. Why? God might ask you to do something that's really hard to do, might cost you your reputation or your job or something, but you're not afraid anymore and you're alive. And that's what really this faith is about. This is how we are tied to the Apostle Paul, you know. St. Paul lost his head. John the Baptist lost his head. Um, or many, many martyrs that gave their lives, their reputations uh, to stand for the truth. And this is one of those films. And right now we're capped off at uh, about, it, we can all, we can, right now we're outdoing the number one film, Indiana Jones. People say, there's no way we're going to win. Well, we're actually outselling them three to one right now, but we're capped. So they're going to just jet rocket right past us. We need a thousand theaters that we don't have right now. We need a thousand theaters. And, that, and this is how it happens. This is the same problem we had when we were doing the Passion of the Christ. People, look, moms, dads calling up theaters and saying, we're going to buy an entire theater for our church. And they bought out theaters all over the country. And, and this is certainly our children are worth it. And we can start letting them know right now in the film, there's a message that I say to the traffickers that God's children are not for sale. And we're going to put on the screen here and in the show notes uh, where uh, where advanced tickets can be purchased. And and tell me the the Tim uh, uh, tell tell me how in the world you you deal with the worst of humanity day after day. How how do, how do you do it? How, how do you get it and do this? And at the same time, you live a family life. Yes. Um. Well, God first, then the family, and and then my work. Uh, it, and I, it, it's my purpose. Uh, I know that um, I'm doing, it's not easy, let me tell you. They know it in this room. It isn't easy. I've given, I've sacrificed my entire career for, for Jesus, for our faith, for because I know if we don't have a country anymore. See, technically we don't. We don't have a south border. You have to have a borders in order to have a country. We're not a sovereign country. It looks like the central bank system or something is keeping our, our borders open. But give me a reason why you're letting nearly 20 million people cross our borders. It's, I mean, certainly that's going to affect how we vote, who's going to be in office, what is going to happen to our children. Look at this critical race theory. Look at how they're grooming our children. We know what's going on. We can set a world on fire. and go, I can do my thing, but I can't do what you can do. You can put it out to the world and tell them. And then it starts to happen. And then at some point, these politicians will have to answer these questions. My whole hope is that a lot of these guys that I worked with outside of Tim from these three-letter agencies start coming forward and become whistleblowers. We And when you see this film, and this is what they're afraid of, see, this is a film they don't want you to see. They did not want you to see The Passion of the Christ. They do not want you to see this one because inside your heart gets on fire. You, when you get on fire, what happens? Usually you got tears in your eyes, but you're ready for anything. You're not afraid of anything. No, there's adventure in this. There's humor in this. You're going to laugh your head off at certain moments, but it's a exquisite film. Listen, two Academy Award winning directors both saw this movie and absolutely blew their minds. If this, if this was a fair world, we would hands down win Best Picture. That's how good it is. But we can't now because we don't have an L and a G and a B and a T and a Q and a plus, plus, plus in there. This is what 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 the truth is. Listen, most films can't be nominated now. It, this is a complete takeover of our values. And we have to fight back. And we can send them that message now by going to this film, by calling your theaters, by organizing groups. Listen, if you have a big enough group together, I'm sure they'll let you see this film. But watch the images of this movie. It's exquisite. We're at the highest, highest level. And God love you all. <laughs> Tim, Tim, let me ask you, um, you know, um, the term pedophile, which we all hate, uh, there, there, there's a whole element out there trying to, 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 to change the branding, uh, change the uh, reposition that, that brand to uh, minor attracted persons to make this the norm. Tell me about that. Well, it's part of a, it's part of a very frightening agenda to enslave our children in the name of liberating them. You see it in 
the sexualization of children through giving them material. Uh, I mean, I, I, I could have arrested people. There's statutes for the kind of material that public school officials are giving children. I mean, there's, there's laws on the books that would disallow that. I mean, it's crazy. It's, it's pornography. And then they're, they're opening this up to kids and making them sexual beings. And then they turn 12, 13, 14. Now you're telling them that they can consent to doing anything to their bodies. Um, you know, in the name of liberating them, they can, you know, inject themselves with, with chemicals. And, and, and it's, What's what's scary about that is then what's stopping the, you from telling the kid he can't consent to have sex with a 50 year old. Um, and so th this is what's happening. And all these policies that are sexualizing our kids are making pedophiles salivate. They're watching. They've had these agendas. They've had these platforms written for decades. And they're sitting back. They can't even believe it that half the country is now just doing the work for them. And so to your point, part of that is destigmatize it. Pedophiles, it's an important word because it gives us all, you know, it's a red flag, as it should. They want to take that away. They want it to be a protected class, a protected group of people that we should be, you know, supporting. And they're, they're just minor protected persons. That's all. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what they want. The UN just got a report saying that it's time to decriminalize sex with children. It's, it's a, It was reported about three weeks ago. So there's a mass movement right now to sexualize children. And I used to think that maybe I would, can, I would I could stop working because we've rescued all the kids. I'm afraid that I'm going to stop working because there's going to be no more laws to enforce because that's what they're taking the laws away. It's going to be glorified and called tolerant and called liberating to let a, let a kid consent to sex with a pedophile. I mean, I hate to say that we're going in that direction. I can't believe we're going in that direction, but we are. That's, that's where we're headed. So so the, the field that I'm working in of human trafficking, I, it used to just be I could focus on rescuing children anywhere in the world. Now the battle's political. I, we have to we have to get into the culture war here so that we can make sure that the laws that protect kids actually stay in place. You know, there uh, we showed this in one of the bigger theaters in Las Vegas, uh, and there were about 1,500 people that watched it. But during three, five showings, and uh, one part, when they're watching Sound of Freedom, they start talking. And so at the end, I got up and I got to speak to all of them. And I said, ask them, I said, why do you guys talk at a particular part of the movie? And in this film, we go to an island. And they all started saying Epstein Island, Epstein Island. And she realizes that Epstein Island isn't the only place out there where they hurt children. I feel that they're trying to normalize those people that have gone. And these are the most powerful people in the entire planet, okay? These are the people that go to the World Economic Forum. All of those people, okay? All of those people that are involved in this need to normalize hurting our children. And that's what you're seeing right now with all of the movement against our culture. And eventually at some point, they're gonna have to make a move at your Bible. They're gonna have to say, First Romans, yeah, this part here where it says men with men, men with wild beasts and things, and God handed them over to their lusts, okay, to a depraved mind. Okay, well, that book has to go. In fact, anything that this guy Paul wrote has to come out. So maybe that we'll have to do that. Uh, because I, I, if we're not willing to stand for our own children, well, then go ahead and just give them your Bible. Tim, Tim, um, how do you, how do you let's i want to talk about you and your your uh your your life in in in, in your with your wife Catherine. um tell me how you separate out doing this all day long all month long uh and, and come home to your family um that that's got to be um a, a mind-boggling experience Absolutely. It's, it's, it's very difficult, especially when you get into undercover work and you are somebody else complete, then you got to come home and become yourself again. And it is, it is, it is really, really hard. I, I do it. Um, I do it honestly, because I, I, I feel that's what God wants. And that, and, and that is, I wouldn't do without that. First of all, I'll say this. There's only one, there's only one time in the scripture, I think, where we can say that Jesus gets, mafioso in his language i'm not talking about turning tables over 
at the temple. I'm talking about mafioso in his language. It's Jesus, so it's righteous. But he says this. He tells you what's going to happen if you hurt children. And that's what the mafia does. He said, it's better that a millstone be cast around your neck and, and, and or tied around your neck and you cast to the bottom of the sea. That would that would be better for you than what is going to happen to you if you hurt kids. Now, I, I love that scripture because I know where Jesus stands on it. You know, and so I can go into dark places knowing he's with me because he's already told me where he stands. And there's a line in the film that I believe Jim ad it. I don't think he was in the original script. And it was, it's one of my favorite scenes. And he uses that scripture in the perfect moment. I don't want to give it away because you got to watch it in context. But he says it in the perfect moment. It was a very real life scenario that I lived. I wasn't smart enough to say the line in real life. Okay, but I was feeling it. <laughs> he said it um, for me. Uh, but that that speaks volumes of, to how I do this, how I go back and forth, how I fight the demons, you know, um, and then try to go and live a life and raise kids. It's it's all it's all the grace of Jesus that allows it for me. I don't know how he did it. How does it? It took me two years just to get uh, healed to come off this film. I, my wife would hear me screaming out in the night. Um, and uh, and this guy, you know, I was recently given a shirt where it has all these superheroes on it, Shazam and Superman and Batman, and and, um, and there are like five or ten of them, and in the middle is Jesus sitting down, and he, Jesus says, let me show you how I saved the world. <laughs> and he's the true man, this is the true man of God here. This man, you don't need to go to a Marvel comic uh, movie. You want to see a real hero? Go watch who he is in his documentaries and go watch what I do in this film and play him. That's a real man. It's a real hero. Thank you. Well, after I saw the uh, film last night, I, I was so looking forward to this today because I, I really am talking to a real hero and uh, who uh, Operation Underground Railroad, Tim, I, I know that's your, uh, your organization. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and how, how we can help. So I actually um, run two foundations. One is Operation Underground Railroad, which uh, supports law enforcement in up to 30 countries around the world and all states uh, in, in, in our own country where we're supporting law enforcement with tools, training, technology, going undercover when, when we're asked to, um, providing every tool you can think of in the fight to help rescue and restore children. The other foundation, which I think your audience would like, it's called the Nazarene Fund, uh, founded by Glenn Beck and David Barton. Uh, and I'm on the board and I, I'm the CEO there. And we're that's a very similar work. We're doing extraction operations, fighting organ harvesting. But the focus is um, helping persecuted Christians and other religious minorities in places where they're just getting beat up, whether it's in the Middle East, Africa, what ISIS did and is still doing to Christian communities and Yazidi communities. Uh, so... If people want to get involved in one or both of those foundations, uh, it's it's OURrescue.org and the NazareneFund.org. Fantastic. So, so gentlemen, tell me about the um, two million for two million goal that you have right now going on, and how we can be involved with that. Well, right now we're at three hundred and seventy thousand tickets, I believe, that we've sold, and we're trying to reach. 2 million tickets uh, for the 2 million children that are being trafficked right now, right here, right at this moment, right now. Um, and um, they have a pay it forward program as well, but I believe we've maxed out that number. But again, what the most important thing, that's news I got in today, uh, which is very vital. Right now we're up 3-1 uh, to the next film below us. It's, a, it's going to be the big blockbuster. But we're selling through the roof right now, but we're going to be capped. So they won't allow us to have any more theaters. But if you, the moms and fathers at home, start calling these theaters and saying, hey, we want it. We're going to buy out one like we did on The Passion of the Christ, buy out an entire theater with our churches. Th that will get the, 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 the IMAXs on all of those theaters, the cinema. They will listen to that as they did on The Passion of the Christ. Is really, you, as a collective whole, you uh, um, families, you're the ones that really hold the power. 
at this point. Well, gentlemen, I know we, we have a short uh, time here, and, and I really appreciate you uh, coming on with us. And Tim, I would love to have you on at some future time to go really deep uh, in, into this topic. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you're, you're invited anytime, and, and we'll make sure that we get that book. But uh, we'll be praying for this, uh, for this film for the success uh, in theaters and uh we we hope to achieve uh, that that two million mark and uh jim thank you so much for for the work that you do and uh we're we're, we're constantly praying for you and and uh, the the decisions you make and the films that you make and thank you for going out there and showing how hollywood how it's really done we really appreciate it and god bless you and yeah your your entire audience and everything and um Let's make, let's keep America great again, okay? Let's, let's do it. It's, um, Will do. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. An estimated 2 million children are trafficked every year, and we can help them. Sound of Freedom is based on a true story about real-life heroes saving kids from the dark world of child trafficking. We know this is heartbreaking, and it hurts to look at. But the first step in helping these children is hearing their story. Not enough people know this problem exists, and even fewer people are willing to do anything about it. Our goal is to inspire two million people to attend the film's opening weekend, to represent the two million trafficked children around the world, to spread the word. Angel Studios set up a pay it forward program where you can pay for someone else's ticket who might not otherwise see it. If the ticket price is stopping you from attending, claim your free ticket at angel.com slash freedom. Sound of Freedom opens the week of July 4th. Every parent, every adult, and every teenager in America should be there to see it. If millions of us come together today to see this film, we could propel the movement to help save millions of children around the world. And you can send the message that God's children are no longer for sale. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Jim. The movie Sound of Freedom hits the theaters on July 4th. And folks, please do support this film. It's very important. You can get your tickets by looking at the uh, website there. We have the address there below. Or, of course, at the box office. But theaters are selling out. So please get your tickets. It's important that we support this. This has been CIA Contagious Influencers of America from the producers of Keep the Faith. We really appreciate your support. Please do check out our website at contagiousinfluencers.com where you'll find all kinds of episodes. I, there are over 200 episodes now of our podcast. And of course, our radio show website is at keepthefaith.com where you can actually listen on demand episodes of Keep the Faith. So we really appreciate your support. Please give us a, a good review, five stars. That would be absolutely amazing. Until next time, I'm David Sams asking you to Please go out there and live that life in living color because it sure is a heck of a lot more interesting than living in black and white. See you next time.